Hey everybody, it's Erin Lefave here from Full Circle Herbals and I'm an herbalist and plant priestess and I'm here to talk to you about what I do when I try an herbal remedy for the first time. Sometimes it doesn't work the way I want it to, sometimes it doesn't taste the way I want it to, and so what do I do when I'm experimenting or as I like to call it, playing with herbs because playing makes it feel less stressful. If I'm experimenting with something, I certainly want it to, to work the first time and sometimes that doesn't work and then I feel like I failed. So I'll just uh, talk to you about how I've made rose hip syrup. Um, the, when you make an, a syrup with herbs, usually you take two ounces of the herb and then you take a pint of water and you um, bring it to a boil and then simmer it as you're um, simmering it, you want the water to escape so you don't put a top on it. Um, so you're trying to um, bring the, um, you're ma essentially making like a decoction. And so a decoction is a very intense, um, very concentrated formula of, of the herb. So it's kind of like a tea but much, much um, denser. So there's a lot more herb into the water mixture. The other thing with decoctions is that you're usually using barks, roots, and other maybe hard berries such as like the rose hips. So that's what a decoction would be. And then after you get um, your decoction done, it basically boils down to half of the liquid came out and now you have about half. Then when you add something sweet to it like a, like a honey or a glycerin um, or maybe even maple sh uh, sugar, um, then then now you have a syrup. So you go from a, like a decoction to a syrup depending on um, if you add a lot of sweetener to it. After you have your nice concentrated mixture of the herbs and it's reduced to at least half um, or more, then you can add in, like I said, your sweetener, your honey, your maple syrup, some people even do sugar. Um, and so usually they say about um, a one-to-one -one mixture. So if you have a half, a, if you have a cup of your liquid, your decoction done, then you add a cup of the sweetener. However, you don't have to add that much if you don't want to. You can just do by how much um, taste, the t what you like, how much sweetener you like in there. The sweetener does help to stabilize it so that it lasts longer. It's basically like a, a way to preserve it, like jellies and jams are that way too. So, uh, so yeah, usually two ounces of the dried herb and then a pint of water. So I did that and I made a rose hip um, syrup. This is when I made it with two ounces of dried rose hips. And the rose hips had the seeds in them. They were dried completely whole. They hadn't, uh, the middle hadn't been removed. Usually the middle does get removed when you do rose hip, uh, use rose hips because of the, the seeds. And there's kind of like these little hair like things in the middle. They're not hair like humans, but it's like a, it looks like hair like substance in, in the center. And those can be kind of irritating. So usually they take those out before uh, the rose hips are used. But in this case, my rose hips um, were completely intact, but I uh, boiled them up. They went from really hard to, of course, soft. And then I could mash them and really open it up and pull out the, the rest of the constituents. And so then I strained it really well with a strainer, a mesh strainer and muslin cloth um, or cheesecloth. I used cheesecloth. And so that really strained every all the bits and pieces out. So what you see here is this is rose hip syrup when I used the two ounces of dried rose hips and then the pint of uh, water and then simmered it. And so that it was about um, half, half of the liquid was left. And then I added honey. And you can see some sediment right there. That's just like part of the rose hips that didn't get strained out. You know, there's always going to be some sort of sediment. I could strain it out again. I could pour... Um, is I could pour all this off if I wanted to and get rid of some of that, but I think this adds to the flavor and just the overall um, herbalness of it. So if I just shake it up, that sediment will go away. So that sediment just goes away. So I'll tell you in a little bit what I use rose hip syrup for, but I still want to show you some other things that I did with it. So then I still had some left from my two ounces of dried rose hips with a pint of water. It's just a little bit of sediment here. And in this one, I added vegetable glycerin because I wanted to see what that tasted like. And they do have um, 
a bit of a different taste. So honey, you certainly can like taste the honey. And with veg vegetable glycerin, it's got a little bit of a, a, a different kind of sweetness. If there's like a warming kind of sensation to uh, vegetable glycerin. So, you know, if you ever wanted to make um, a honey and you wanted to give it to a baby, then a syrup with honey in it is not recommended for kids uh, two and under or one and under. It's it's one of those and so you want to you know just double check with um, how young with children you can give honey so that's why I made one with vegetable glycerin because that one is a good um, it it uh, preserves um, things very well vegetable glycerin does and it's a sweetener because you, you want to get some sweetness into this and also it's got some um, good qualities to it as well and you could give it to um, children so and if babies are teething, you uh, it's it's suggested to use rose hip syrup, you know, just a couple drops, and that could be um, helpful. It's very very high in vitamin C. Rose hips are extremely high in vitamin C. They um, have more vitamin C in them than any citrus fruit, and up to depending on if they're a dried rose hip or fresh rose hips that were used in an herbal remedy, you could have like. 60 times more vitamin C in in it than um, some citrus, some like lemons or, or or oranges too. So it's really packed with vitamin C and uh, other things too, like antioxidants, uh, may have some anti-inflammatory um, properties to it. Rose hips have lots of pectin in it, and pectin is like a nice, soothing, um, um, uh, how do I explain pectin? Well, pectin helps to stabilize things and, and make them set. So it's used in jellies and jams many times. And um, so it's good for people who like have joint issues and need that kind of um, like, like a lubrication, so to speak, in their body and need that kind of nourishing, moistening, um, cushion type feel to it. So uh, so yeah, so pectin is in um, rose hips. And so that can be useful for people with arthritic and like rheumati uh, rheumatism type issues. Um, so that might be something they would consider. So there I have the, I did two ounces of the dried um, rose hips and then added the pint of water and then boiled it down and then added the honey in one and vegetable glycerin in the other. And I didn't really feel like there was a lot of the rose hip flavor in it. And I didn't feel like it had such a, um, a really good color like I wanted it to. It's kind of hard to see here. So what I did was added, then I did a four ounces of dried uh, rose hips to a pint of water and I really liked um, how that turned out instead. It was um, much thicker, um, much tastier, much more, it's a very dark, it's dark color. Let's see, I've got little notes on here. So anyways, it just had more of the red pink color in it when I was finished and that really made me happy because then I felt like I had the rose hips um, in there. So I just doubled the recipe to see what would happen and uh, I liked that much better. I suspect that if you add two ounces of a different kind of herb into a pint of water to make a syrup, you know, that might be enough because some herbs when they're dried um, you know, there's not much of it. it. It's very lightweight. So when you add some herbs, um, you might have a big bulk in the pan and then you add the water. Now with rose hips, one little rose hip is, is heavy. So when I added the rose hips into the pan with the water, I could tell like that doesn't like look like a lot. Um, it might be really concentrated in there. So maybe that's gonna be fine. So I did the two ounces of dried rose hips and, and made the syrup. But um, like I said, I really wasn't satisfied with the flavor and the, the consistency of it, so I upped it to four ounces and made a whole new batch. So, so even though the, the book that I read by Rosemary Gladstar said the general idea to make a uh, herbal syrup is the two ounces of dried and one um, pint of water, boil it down to about half or less, and then add your sweetener, um, even though it said that, you know, I didn't just stick with it just because it said that in the book by a most amazing herbalist ever. <laughs> Rosemary's great. Um, 
you know, you have to also decide for yourself if you want it to taste different or add, add some other things into it that you think would be helpful. So, and we're just talking rose hips water and a sweetener such as honey, vegetable glycerin, maple syrup. Um, maybe if you're really desperate for a sweetener, you could do like brown sugar, white sugar. Those, those are my last options I would ever do. Because, um, you know, honey and vegetable glycerin can be, you know, pricey for some people. They, they do cost a little bit more than, let's say, sugar does. So um, even though, you know, those are, those are the three, water, a sweetener, and the herb, and so there's, you're not, there's not too much damage you can do. <laughs> it's not like you're experimenting with, like, a pharmaceutical. We're just talking rose hips here. So um, the other things that you can make syrup with, gosh, you could do, well, elderberry syrup is a very popular one, too. Um, and so rose, uh, elderberry syrups, definitely you can play with the amount of elderberry you put in it and different kinds of sweeteners. And you can also start adding other herbs in there too. Like you could add some cinnamon in there and just play around with, you know, if you like that um, warming flavor of cinnamon in with your syrup. Uh, and, you know, just pretty, pretty easy um, recipe to do and fun to, to kind of play with and experiment with it. So, so that's what I do when I'm playing with herbs and if I make something and it just doesn't seem right or... And rather than thinking like, oh, I'm not a good herbalist, I'm not a good um, person to be making herbal remedies, you just try it again and try to adjust it just like you would with baking or anything like that. So let's see. So yeah, I made quite a bit of rose hip syrup. I can certainly use it, even the one that's kind of like taste uh, a little bit weaker. So I have like, look at all this. I have, and then I have another one. So so what I can do with this is add it to, I like to add sweetener to my herbal teas, and I can add it to my herbal teas when they're hot. Um, sometimes I just go and take a little spoonful of it just to get the, a boost of vitamin C. Uh, you could even add it onto some hot oatmeal. Uh, anything warm that you want to add sweetener to, you could, you could do that with. You could add it into a smoothie. You could add it into some juice, um, some sparkling water different flavored waters, that would be really fun to do too. So Kelly is asking, would elderberry syrup have the same recipe as the rose hips? You know, usually with elderberry syrup, the way I um, remember it is I use, a, um, I use, I think it's a half a cup of dried elderberry or a fresh, or if you're using them fresh, then you use a whole cup. So I usually don't, um, I usually don't weigh it, but I that's what I would do. I would start out with two ounces of dried elderberry and then your pint of boiling water too. And then just see if you want to have it to be more concentrated and add more elderberry or not. So I don't use ounces with that one. I just kind of like put it, I put half a cup to a cup of dried elderberries into, um, into let's see, well, how much water do I do for that one? I do a pint. Yeah, do a pint or, or a quart. It just depends on how much I have in there, so. Okay, some other, th I'm gonna show you one other experiment I'm doing playing with herbs. Um, I've never made a milky oat tincture before. And so this is a 50% vodka, which would be 100 proof vodka. And uh, I have some milky oats in there. You see, those are oats that we would eat with elder, um, that uh, like oatmeal. Oatmeal is the same plant that we would make milky oats from. And so these have been steeping for way too long. <laughs> and I know that, but I, um, like I said, I've never made it. And I just want to see what happens if I leave them in here for a long period of time. Some people do leave their plant matter in there until they want to use it. And others um, only leave it in there for about four to six weeks, just depending. So, um... So there you go. I just this is just me playing around with herbs, seeing what they're doing, and um, I have all sorts of herbs here that sometimes I don't use them right away, but I've found them and I want to harvest them. Yeah, it smells good. It just smells like vodka with some milky oats in it. So I don't do things perfectly by any means. I'm always playing around. I love to bake, and I've baked since I was a child. So I, um, so I use the same kind of experience with experimenting and playing around with baking that I do with herbal remedies. 
and I'm not really worried that I'm going to make something um, that's not usable. I'm not really worried that, about making something that's bad for me uh, because I'm just using herbs that are like food products pretty much like elderberry, rose hips, uh, milky oats. I mean, these are like food products, just making them in a more concentrated way. So as you can see here, I have lots of different things. Um, I have products from various companies. I have products from people who are making stuff just for family and friends and not selling it. And that's um, got a lot of delicious things going on in here. And then herbs that I've purchased, herbs that I've grown, um, herbs that I haven't grown but I've harvested. <coughs> herbs that get dusty. <laughs> so... So yeah, that's um, that's. I just wanted to talk to you about making that rose hip syrup and different ways that can be made and different um, sweeteners that can be used. So in the upcoming um, Herbal Magic, How to Learn Herbalism e-course series that I have, tomorrow is the last day to sign up for that. It's the only time this year that I'm doing um, live rounds of it. So it's eight weeks and I'm coming um, on live for live lessons for each week. Uh, I usually just do pre-recorded videos that get sent out and you have access to all those pre-recorded videos, but I'm also going to add on live uh, video lessons with those too. So uh, like I said, it's the only time this year I'm doing live round. I've added on three extra weeks. One is also called Herbal Applications, where I'll be talking about uh, more detail about how to make um, uh, different things like poultice, poultices and salves and tinctures and tea, tea blends. Um, what else am I adding on to there? There is a, a whole week where we do um, a herbal remedy uh, first aid kit, how to make your own first aid kit in there. And then all the first uh, four to five weeks are really geared at like how to get focused with your learning herbalism, which sources to kind of pick from, how to reduce that overwhelm since there's just like it's so much information out there on herb, herbs and what do you sift through, which ones do you keep, uh, who do you trust, and then like uh, how to make a plan for yourself of what you want to use for for herbs in your own life and your own um, wellness plan, as well as if you want to go on to, you know, be an herbalist for family, friends, community, like how does that work too? So that's all wrapped up in this eight week course. Uh, and there's all sorts of extra bonus videos in there that I'm adding this time too. So there's one about three medicinal, three shrubs that can be used for herbal remedies, three trees that can be used for herbal remedies. Um, there's all sorts of worksheets and templates in there to help make your herbal learning really fun and enjoyable. And uh, then there's a whole group of us who are in there talking about um, herbs and learning from each other and giving each other, you know, motivation and encouragement to keep going. Because if you're like me, kind of stopped and started learning herbs and, um, you know, I kind of need somebody to help motivate me and get going through that. So I can talk to you all about that. And... Um, Feel free to send me an email or a Facebook message uh, asking any questions about that. I do have payment plans available, so if you can't do the whole $249 up front, there, um, you could do five, five payments um, in each 30 days. So. so tomorrow's the last day to sign up for that. So thanks for joining in this live, everybody, and um, have a great day. Hope you stay warm if you're in Wisconsin here or any other place where we're in five feet of snow or so. Uh, so take care. Thanks for joining.